In today's video, how low is too low for calories? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today's video is going to be on the topic of how low your calories can get. The question came from my Instagram direct message and once again you guys have come through. I keep thinking I'm going to have to use one of my topics that I have planned but whenever I look at my direct messages and see a great question from you guys. I get really excited and um, this is a very legitimate question. It's actually a question I have to ask myself as a coach. I think early on when you start coaching people, you especially hear the horror stories of people who have been on such low calorie diets for such a long time that they now struggle with things like hormones, insulin sensitivity, the ability to lose weight. Um, and so as a coach, you are immediately concerned that you don't want to be that coach that does that. So I want to talk about a few different scenarios. So the question here that I'll post up for you guys to see is from someone that has just been reducing calories, adding cardio, and they're starting to wonder, is it worth it? Is the, is the low calorie dieting worth it? Is the adding cardio in? And when should they start to get concerned? So I'm going to give you my opinion on those. The first thing to look for if calories are getting too low. I really start to look at things like physical changes that start to happen such as you have a problem with your hair, have a problem with your nails, um, you're having problems sleeping, um, hunger becomes insatiable around the clock, right? Now there is going to be some hunger associated with a caloric deficit always, especially as your body goes through these changes and as you adapt you'll find that hunger kind of improves. You won't be as hungry. Um, you might be hungry immediately once you make a change, but then within a few days your body will kind of adapt to that as the new caloric intake level and you'll be good to go. But when I see clients struggling day after day and things start to happen such as binging, overeating, the inability to stay on plan, um, inability to focus, and we're not in a contest prep, well that's when I think it might be time to spend a little bit of time in reverse. Now, is there a specific number? There are definitely some numbers that I don't like to go below. So I'm going to keep protein pretty stable. So if you're 150 pounds, I'm going to keep protein around 150. It might go up um, as you get lighter and leaner, um, just because sometimes protein helps with satiety and helps you stay on your plan. But let's just assume protein is going to stay pretty stable. What are the scary numbers for me? Going below 30 grams of fat is scary for me. When you're getting less than 30 grams of nutritional fat per day, I think it's going to start having an impact on overall health and well-being. Things like I said, hair, nails, uh, organs, uh, tissues, uh, recovery, hormones. So let's if you're getting below 30 grams of fat a day, let's just start paying attention. And then, you know, with carbohydrates, because of ketogenic dieting, where you're basically ingesting um, almost zero carbohydrates intentionally, there, there has been some evidence that going that low can be fine. But as a coach who coaches physique athletes, I don't like to let my clients get below 60, 50 grams of carbohydrates a day, and that's going to be very extreme, right? If we have to get to that extreme level, I'm also probably going to have multiple refeed days per week where we are at least doubling your carbohydrates and maybe even more. Um, maybe doing some carb cycling where we start high and taper down or start low and taper up. So when I get to these levels where I have to get really aggressive, I start to do some other things. I call them toggle switches. Um, so the big variable here is once our calories are getting this low, how can we keep progress coming? And the one thing that I've seen consistently that works is low intensity steady state cardio. And why is this? Well, low intensity steady state cardio by nature burns fat as fuel. The type of fuel that you burn when you're doing cardio is based on the intensity. So if you're running a sprint, those 10, 15 seconds that you're sprinting, you're burning glycogen as the primary fuel source. When you're doing low intensity steady state, such as walking, the primary fuel source you're going to be using is fat. So I like this. I like the fact that you're going to be using fat as fuel. I also like that it's not difficult to recover from. Low intensity steady state, uh, my favorite currently is incline walking on a treadmill, right? You're huffing and puffing a little bit, but when you're done, a few minutes, bam, you're back to being your normal self again. 
this is where recovery can come into play, right? So we still want to be able to train with weights. So uh, this person, I believe, said they're doing 120 minutes per week, which is only two hours, and I don't want to, I don't want to diminish that. But you know, for the people that I work with, I will have them do an hour, five to six days a week if necessary. Again, in extreme cases, even more. Depends on the goal. Contest prep being the goal, we might be getting a little more intense for short periods of time. So it just comes down to where you are in your journey, how happy you are. Um, overall well-being does come into play. Don't look at fat loss as a short-term goal where if you get stuck and your calories are low, you failed. Look at it like, okay, this is what my body's telling me. We plateaued. I'm not comfortable getting calories lower or increasing the cardio. But instead, look at it as an opportunity. You know what? You get to build, you get to improve. You might not be at your goal body composition, but don't look at this as a six month or one year plan, right? If, you, if you're really interested, go on, my, um, go on my client page and look at at Team Pro Physique on Instagram and look at some of the clients that I've worked with for two, three, four years, right? So you see that these transformations are are lifestyle transformations, okay? Our bodies are so dynamic and so awesome that if you just stick with the process, you're going to see some amazing changes. And if you're, if you're stuck in a fat loss phase and you're not progressing, well, a reverse diet might provide some, some fantastic benefit, okay? One of the best things to increase lean body mass is reversing your calories. And if you reverse your calories and start walking them up and you add more lean body mass, well, your metabolic rate will increase making it easier in the future to lose body fat. So again, you can reach that goal. We might not do it the first time through. So how low should is too low for calories? To me, it's all about the feedback with the client and the overall well-being of the client as well as the goal. Yes, as a coach who coaches competitors that compete at the highest level of sports, I have pushed people past what I am comfortable pushing them through but it's with a conversation, it's understanding that we know when this is over, this is short term, okay? Competing by no means should be considered healthy, okay? I'm not looking at getting someone at the pinnacle of health, I'm looking at getting them at the pinnacle of physique competition ready, and that's what we're doing. So hopefully this answered your question, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.